Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Tuesday, March 1st, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. The models are in. Heavy snow throughout mid-March. But the big story, atmospheric river currently slamming the Pacific Northwest. Keep calm. It's boom time. Record snow. Extreme atmospheric river triggers avalanche warnings. One news station considered it a Cat 4 out of Cat 5 atmospheric rivers. I've never heard of such a thing, but I do digress. There you can see heavy rain and snow hitting the Pacific Northwest, and those totals are coming up in just a moment. Big winter storm could slam Minnesota. Say it ain't soda this week. Well, it is soda, and we'll get to those models in just a minute. There it is. A Cat 4 atmospheric river is forecast to drench the Pacific Northwest early this week. Well, it's on. It's already on, and it's already drenching. <laughs> Colorado got hammered with up to 50 inches of snow in our region and powder up to your nipples. Take a look at that. Yesterday in southern Colorado, 30-plus inches of snow. That was actually four days ago. But Purgatory saw 45, Silverton 44, Wolf Creek 43, 53 out of the total storm. And many places saw four feet of snow or more. Shut up, Al! Storm moves through the northeast, dumping nearly a foot of snow. Ho, ho. And that was a steady snow that uh, started in the pre-dawn hours and brought nearly a foot of accumulation in some areas in the northeast, like a beast. Let's take a look at the... Snowfall analysis. Over the last 24 hours, you can see none of it is showing up there. But if we put on the 72-hour map, boom, there are your northeast totals. And certainly over a foot of snow in some areas. Lake effect regions, 18 inches there, right just south of Kingston. So New York State picking up the big totals. Some large numbers in Vermont, New Hampshire as well, up in the mountains. But take a look at how dark the regions are up in the northwest. If it gets black, it's above, well, once it gets black, you never go back here in these regions. But what it means is it's over four feet of snow in those dark sections. So in these areas of the Cascades and Idaho and western Montana, obviously there's going to be extreme avalanche warnings and watches. So don't plan on going into the backcountry if you don't know what you're doing. You'll simply get buried. And this snow is going to continue with a little bit more on tap. And let's bring it back and run it through for you a day at a time. Here's your Wednesday, March 2nd. And you're going to see a lot more snow in the Northeast in those lake effect regions, Vermont, New Hampshire, all of Maine. It's insane. But more snow tipping in. More snow in Idaho. More snow in uh, western Montana as well as Washington State. And that's going to continue on Thursday to drop down into Oregon. And here on Friday is where that storm develops into the uh, Sierras there. Much needed moisture happening in California. But take a look at Minnesota and Wisconsin here. Here is Saturday as the storm develops. Heavy snow in northern Wisconsin. Heavy snow in Minnesota. Take a look at that. Wow. Could be 16-inch pockets in northern Wisconsin, central Minnesota, St. Anne's Soda. 16 inches or more uh, moving down through the end of the weekend there into Monday. Uh, we see all of the Rockies picking up some pretty significant snow. So that's looking good. And later into March, it lights up the southern Appalachians, maybe some Texas snow into mid-March. Quite spectacular, to say the least. Once again, these are models which are mostly schmodels when you go out this far. So this, this is probably more reasonable, right, to there. Now the total snow mass for the Northern Hemisphere is anything but reasonable, and not a single mainstream outlet has ever reported on it because it is simply 400 gigatons above the multi decadal average going back before global warming existed. Say that five times fast. It means that right now the Northern Hemisphere has 400 gigatons more snow than it normally did back in 1980. So, and more snow is coming. We just showed you now major flood swamp Australia's east coast claiming I'm certain it's more than eight lives. But this has everything to do with the grand solar minimum we're d diving down into that we're living and the uh, cosmic ray maximum increased cosmic rays, which increase cloud nucleation, which increase flooding. Hello.
Now, Curiosity Rover finds a bizarre rock on Mars that, according to many, looks like a flower. But apparently they never... That's There's no flower that looks like that. That looks like a coral. In case you haven't ever been to school, there are no flowers that look like this, but there are hundreds of coral species that look exactly like this. So, some dumb people writing some dumb articles. Nevados de Ruiz, Volcano Colombia, continuing ash emissions and beautiful capture here with a puff puff pass in Colombia. Imagine the amount of cocaine being manufactured in those hills right now. Worldwide Volcano News Update, Semaru, Ibu, Sange, Suanosima. Not much to report on. Normal volcanic activity worldwide, no uptick seen, no uptick necessary. Wow, we might need to open up this image. To, that's definitely necessary. What is unnecessary is that scientists have no idea what's going on, so they make a computer-generated graphic like this to just simply blow your mind. I mean, it's fantastic. Death spiral, a black hole spins on its side. Scientists are completely baffled, and this is completely unexpected. Hello. But it's fascinating, and the kids love to watch it. Wow, we live in a fairy tale science fiction novel. Largest human family tree ever created retraces the history of our species. Now we're going to put together a podcast, throw it over on magnetic reversal news in the next 24 hours. But what you should glean is that this is the largest Ancestry.com uh, composite of genetic information that we know worldwide. And it's showing the migratory patterns of specific genomes. It is quite mind-blowing. And it proves that the out-of-Africa theory is, well, just one of the places that we came out of. As you can see, the genetic material flowing out of multiple fountains across the globe. Absolutely gorgeous. And so check out the podcast on the largest human family tree ever created, retracing the history of our species over at Magnetic Reversal News when it goes live. Scientists uncovered the largest crater on Earth under 100,000 years old. And the impact crater is the second discovered in China, and it is over one mile wide, and it is fantastic in a farming region. The crescent-shaped crater in northeast China holds the record as the largest impact crater on Earth that formed in the last 100,000 years. Prior to 2020, the only other impact crater ever discovered in China was found in Xinjiang County on the coastal province of Linyongning, according to a statement from NASA Earth Observatory. Then, in July 2021, scientists confirmed that a geologic structure in the lesser Xinjiang mountain range had formed as a result of a space rock striking Earth. The team published the description of the new found impact crater that month in the Journal of Meteorics and Planetary Science. And it certainly was boom time in this region of China. When was it? When did the impact occur? Well, the Yinland crater measures 1.15 miles across and likely formed about 46,000 to 53,000 years ago based on radiocarbon dating of the charcoal and organic-like sediments from the site, the NASA statement says. Researchers collected these sediment samples by extracting a drill core from the center of the crater. How else would you do it? They almost blew it, though. Scientists proposed Tyrannosaurus had three species, not just Rex Bear. So there is not just Tyrannosaurus Rex Bear. There could be three other species of Tyrannosaur. The group of researchers is proposing that Tyrannosaurus, the most famous of all dinosaurs and the ultimate apex predator, actually includes three species and not just the single T-Rex, based on thigh bone and tooth variations among dozens of its fossils. T-Rex, meaning tyrant lizard king, has been the sole species of the genus Tyrannosaurus, recognized since the dinosaur was first described in 1905. A genus is a broader grouping of related organisms than a species. So there you have some Tyrannosaurus rexosaurus information norris. Recurrent large-scale solar proton events before the onset of the Wolf Grand Minima. Holy macaroni! What does that mean? Well, it means that we might actually be onto something. And in fact, if a recurrent large-scale solar proton event happens before the onset of a Grand Minima, we should be waiting for a recurrent large-scale solar proton event which is not a good thing. 
Carbon-14 and tree rings have suggested that there have been multiple extreme solar proton events in the past. While the largest event, such as the 774-775 CE Charlemagne event, can be significantly detected by the typical precision of accelerator mass spectroscopy or spectrometry, smaller but possibly more frequent events have been difficult to detect. Thus, the frequency or any characteristic of such relatively small events are still largely unknown until now. In this paper, they report on large solar proton events that occurred in 1266 to 1262 and 1268 to 1269, as well as 1279 to 1280, before the onset of the Wolf Minimum, based on high-precision carbon-14 analysis. It suggests that they had occurred at the maximum and the declining phase of the solar cycles, and that they had occurred during the transition time of solar activity into a deep minimum, a time, well, that we currently are living. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. I hope you got something out of the video. Hit that like button, subscribe, and comment below. Share this with like-minded people. Become a Patreon and support the work that we do. We love you. And that's a boom. Be safe. Mm -hmm.